And I would like to start things out by uh, introducing myself. Hello, my name is Lance Zurich, and I am the product manager for the Fisher Technic division over here at Studica. And today I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Fisher Technic STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM engineering sets. Now these sets were designed to enable educators to provide students with a project-based standards-focused curriculum program involving inquiry, design, and problem solving. Now the curriculum for each of these sets was created especially for Fisher Technic by noted educator and STEM expert, Tom White. And we'll talk about Tom White in just a little bit, but first off, what is STEM education? Well, of course, most educators are well aware that the term STEM is an acronym, the letters of which stand for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now, if you're involved in any aspect of education, you probably can't open your email box without seeing STEM highlighted in the subject line of at least one of your daily messages. And you certainly can't read an educational journal and you can't visit an educational conference today without being bombarded by references to STEM. Uh, the reason for this is, of course, really quite simple. Now, to quote the Bipartisan Congressional STEM Education Caucus in their report on the importance of STEM education, STEM education is necessary because it helps provide the scientists and engineers needed for our future development. It provides the future workforce with the skills required of a high-tech world, and it builds the foundation for scientifically literate voters and citizens. Now, as such, STEM education could really be considered kind of a matter of national security. Now, on every level, the world around us is changing at a frantic pace. STEM education, it could be argued, enables us, both as individuals and as a nation, to understand and keep up with these rapid changes in technology, changes which are, in turn, altering the demands and the scope of industry. And obviously, if we as a nation are to keep our stature and position on the world stage, this requires us to keep pace with the rapid developments which are occurring all around the globe, where countries such as China and India are making major, inve making major investments in state-of-the-art infrastructure. And while all of this is well and good, and while we should all, of course, strive to be good citizens, many students might also ask, so what's in it for me? Uh, why do I want to study engineering, or why do I want to study coding, or whatever? So let's consider what it means on a more individual base level. First off, a few years back, the United States Department of Commerce released a set of projections for the decade leading up to 2018. Now, these projections indicated that STEM occupations should grow by 17% compared with 9.8% growth for all other occupations. Now, in March of 2017, the Office of the Chief Economist released a STEM Jobs 2017 update which took a look at how these numbers were playing out up to the year 2015, with at that point, three years still left in the initial projection. Now, what they found then was that while the projected STEM growth up to that point, once again, we're talking about 2015, was as expected up significantly, albeit just a little bit less than they expected to reach in total by 2018. Uh, so essentially, at, in 2015, it was up 14% instead of the full 17% they were projecting. But when they looked at the actual growth for non-STEM jobs, which again, they expected would reach 9.8% when all was said and done, at this point, it had instead only reached a fraction of that growth, only 1.7%, which is really a pretty stark difference. Now, here's a statistic I'd like to share that should give anyone entering the job market of the future pause. And this comes from J.D. Chesloff in his Education Week article from March of 2013. And to quote Mr. Chesloff, across the country, across all occupations, there are 3.6 people for every one job. Now in STEM fields, there's one person for every 1.9 jobs. Employers can't find the talent to fill these jobs, which is even more surprising considering that the U.S. Census Bureau recently reported that the median salary for engineering majors was the highest of any profession, end quote. Now, as Chesloff goes on in his article to state, quote, supply is low and demand is high. There is a mismatch between projected future jobs requiring STEM skills and the projected supply of qualified workers to fill them, end quote. Now, going back to that STEM Jobs 2017 update, which I mentioned before, that was released by the U.S. Department of Commerce, here are three key points mentioned in this report that are well worth keeping in mind when considering the importance of STEM education to the worker. 
Key point one, STEM workers command higher wages earning on average 29% more than their non-STEM counterparts in 2015. Key point number two relates to the fact that many graduates with STEM skills may not, not always end up in what are strictly considered to be classic STEM jobs. And by this, of course, we mean things like becoming a scientist or an engineer. To quote the report, STEM degree holders enjoy higher earnings regardless of whether they work in STEM or non-STEM occupations, end quote. Now, playing off on this idea, there was a video I saw recently on YouTube posted on the Women's Forum for the Economy and Society, and the title of that video, I think, really kind of sums up things nicely, and that was, every company is a tech company. Essentially, what I took from that is that what students want to keep in mind is that when a company, whatever a company makes, whatever a company sells, whatever company, whatever service a company performs, at some point, STEM skills are required to help that company fulfill their mission. Now, moving right along, key point number three relates to job growth. Quoting the report again. Employment in STEM occupations grew much faster than employment in non-STEM occupations over the last decade, 24.4% versus 4% respectively, and STEM occupations are projected to continue to grow by 8.9% from 2014 to 2024, compared to just 6.4% growth for non-STEM occupations, end quote. Well, the trick for educators is to find methods for getting students involved with STEM, and in particular, getting them involved with the most highly in-demand technology-focused skill areas, things such as engineering and coding, in a way that engages the student's, student's interest and creativity, but while at the same time developing the work habits, the way of approaching problems, and the skills that they, know they will need to draw on as they move forward in their careers, both their academic careers and in their working lives. Now, most experts agree that one of the most effective methods for teaching STEM is by providing exercises where certain results will occur and students have to discover why they occurred or where students have to find a way to achieve a specific outcome. Now, they can do this through experimentation, research, and through trial and error activities. In short, they find the answers to these questions through the use of hands-on project-based learning. And that brings us to the focus of today's webinar, which are the Fisher Technic STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM Engineering sets. Now, both of these sets have been designed to provide a guided project-based learning experience complete with detailed standards-focused curriculum using the unique Fisher Technic building system. So what is Fisher Technic? Well, just to provide you with a little bit of background, Fisher Technic is a flexible and innovative construction system. Now, unlike other popular construction sets that are designed to simply stack, Fisher Technic was created with more of an engineering mindset. The core building block in the Fisher Technic system is unique in that it allows attachment from all six sides, thus it allows for almost limitless design possibilities. Now, many of the parts are designed to slide together and lock in place, and the hundreds of different parts available will also help to address very specific design needs. Fisher Technic was created back in 1964 by German inventor Arthur Fisher, noted for countless innovations used in the construction and in the automotive industries. Now, Mr. Fisher, at the time of his death in 2016, held more patents in his name than Thomas Alva Edison had amassed during his own lifetime. Now, besides Fisher Technic, Mr. Fisher was also the inventor of synchronized flash photography back in 1949, as well as the creator of the expanding nylon wall plug, you'll see him holding one in the photo there, which is used in conjunction with a screw or a bolt to help anchor heavy objects to walls. Now his company, the Fisher Group, employs thousands of individuals worldwide producing many variations of fastening devices used in building construction, as well as various components used in the automotive industry. And they are also providing consulting services in regards to various manufacturing processes and automation. Now, I'd also like to mention that Fisher Technic was the very first of any of the construction set manufacturers to offer students the ability to build and program their own robots, and that was back using the original pre-Macintosh era Apple computers. If any of you remember those? 
Now, almost since its inception, Fisher Technic was, has been used by middle schools, high schools, and colleges, universities all around the globe to explore STEM-related subjects. These are, of course, things like robotics, pneumatics, renewable energy, mechanics, optics, physics, and much more. Fisher Technic has also been used by numerous companies, including companies like Porsche, Daimler Chrysler, and BMW, just to name drop a few, for industrial simulation and training purposes. Now, in addition, over the last several years, Fisher Technic's line of pre-assembled simulation models have found wide adoption for demonstrating and exploring the world of IoT, also known as the Internet of Things, where industrial processes can be monitored and controlled from the cloud. Now, as such, more than being just something that students are only going to use for a year or two in their development, you can really think of Fisher Technic as being designed so that students, students can grow along with it. Essentially, as students progress through their academic careers, they can also progress through the levels of Fisher Technic education solutions, which are available. The Fisher Technic STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM Engineering sets are two of the most important members of the Fisher Technic education family. STEM Prep 2.0 is designed for exploring essential aspects of technology with a focus on physics, robotics, energy, and power. STEM engineering is designed to provide a comprehensive overview of robotics, coding, and automation systems. Each of these STEM-focused sets is designed to provide all of the materials you'll need, both the physical and the instructional materials, to enable teachers to offer a complete daily STEM-focused classroom experience. STEM Prep 2.0 contains over 75 academic hours of curriculum material, and STEM Engineering contains over 150 academic hours of curriculum material. So essentially, if you offer your students a STEM education class of a single 50-minute period each day, five days a week, this would provide you with enough curriculum material with the STEM Prep 2.0 set to cover half a year, and with the STEM Engineering set to essentially cover a full academic year. Now the curriculum for each of these sets comes in a handy PDF format. There is a curriculum PDF specifically for the teacher to conduct the class, and also a separate PDF that can be shared with students, which acts as a guide for all the class activities and helps to keep everyone on the same page and to assist new users of the Fisher Technic system, the curriculum also includes a helpful tutorial guide. This section provides guidance on identifying the many types of parts that are included in the set. It shows how these parts, parts fit, fit together, excuse me, and it walks users step-by-step step through the building of a simple model. The STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM Engineering sets are also designed to be somewhat dual function. Now, besides being designed so that educators can conduct a curriculum-centered, project-based STEM class, they also include full-color step-by-step assembly manuals in PDF form from popular Fisher Technic education sets. Now, these assembly manuals can, of course, be used as a reference when students will be creating their own original projects. But they also allow you to build all of the models shown in each manual with the parts included in each of these sets. In fact, the STEM engineering set allows you to build all of the models found in Fisher Technic's three most popular robotics focused sets. And the STEM Prep 2.0 allows you to build all the models found in eight different STEM education sets, as well as the robotics BT beginner set. And we're gonna look at that a, more, a little bit more in a little bit, a little bit here. Now, as I mentioned at the very top of the presentation, the curriculum material found in the Fisher Technic STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM Engineering sets was created by Fisher, or for Fisher Technic by a man named Tom White. Now, Tom's a noted educator. He's been involved in STEM education in some way, shape, or form since the 1970s. Uh, he's been designing programs for educational in institutions and for industry use. In fact, as an expert in hardware and software integration, Tom was pivotal in introducing CAD, CAM, control systems, digital control, additive manufacturing, and other like topics to the classroom. Now, currently, Tom is the Director of Technology for STEM Curriculum at the globally recognized industrial manufacturing company, Siemens. 
Now, I'd like to say that this is not the first time that Tom White has created curriculum around Fisher Technic. Besides also being the creator of the curriculum used in our elementary focus introduction to STEM series and our other project-based offering, the robotic competition set, both of which are the subject of their own webinar presentations if you're interested in looking at those. But besides that, Tom has also incorporated Fisher Technic and many of the education programs that he's designed over the years. Now, Tom has often stated that he believes the Fisher Technic system is the ideal kind of construction set to use for an engineering-based curriculum program, and he's given several reasons for this. First off, he likes the fact that the materials can be used and reused. Things that are built can be taken apart and reassembled into something completely different. He also likes the versatility of the Fisher Technic system and the fact that it offers so much more economy than purchasing just an expensive piece of equipment. For example, think of something like a robotic arm that you might only use for a few experiments or demonstrations, and then you put it on a shelf to just gather dust until the next year. He also appreciates that the Fisher Technic system with its wide assortment of very specific mechanical and structural parts and components allows almost limitless creative opportunities for engineering students. Now the curriculum for both the STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM Engineering sets has been designed to address some of the most widely recognized academic standards currently in place. Now this includes the college and career readiness standards for math, science, reading, and writing, the NSES content standards, standards for technological literacy, ISTE standards, and the next generation science standards. Now, when Tom Way put together the curriculum for these two sets, he had several goals in mind. First, based upon his observation that various types of teachers have different strong points, for example, he sees his own strong point as being the creation of curriculum such as this, more so than conducting a lecture, he focused on creating a curriculum that would provide a broad foundation of tools for all types of teachers to be successful in providing this class so they could instead focus on the needs of the students. Now, materials have been included at the beginning to familiarize new users with how the system works. And each section of the curriculum clearly spells out how things will be covered in that unit. Essentially, this was all designed as a turnkey solution that would provide everything teachers will need in one place. In short, the curriculum was designed to provide a clear roadmap for both the students and the teachers with the learning facilitated through the extensive use of projects and problems for the students to address. Now the goal was also to enable teachers to provide students with engaging curriculum based projects that had an authentic objective in solving real world problems and which contain embedded academics. The detailed curriculum with each set, if followed, will allow educators to provide what is essentially a standalone project based ed STEM education class. Now, of course, as mentioned before, each set also includes step-by-step -step instructions for building the models found in various topic-focused Fisher Technic STEM-related sets. Now, under this project-focused model, students are told upfront what they will need to learn and understand. They are given a real-world scenario where they will take on the role of a professional working on a team, which has been presented with a design challenge that they must devise a solution to and then are also provided with different tools and pathways to help them achieve this goal. Now, among other things, students will be asked to perform research, and by this we mean research both inside and outside of class, and they have to learn the documentation process. This includes things like creating a design brief, maintaining a digital engineering journal, and so on. And students are also gonna be required to collect data. They're gonna to have to learn firsthand how data acquisition works, learn how to process data, how to put data into graphs and other formats, and so on. Students are given a technical literacy task driven by the project. Fulfilling the task will require them to gain the knowledge and the tools needed to address it through research and exploration. Students will perform a series of specially designed enabling activities through which they will acquire the necessary science, math, and tech-based skills to successfully complete the project at hand. They will devise solutions to their tasks and create prototypes, of course, using the advanced Fisher Technic modeling system. When required, 
Students will also create and install the programs needed to control those prototypes. As we mentioned, they're going to document every step of the entire process, and at the end, they'll formally present their findings, including a demonstration of the prototype in action. Now at this point, we're gonna begin with a look at each of these sets. And we're gonna begin with the Fisher Technic STEM Prep 2.0, which you see on your screen right now. Now the PREP in the name, like the term STEM, is an acronym. In this case, it stands for Physics, Robotics, Energy, and Power, which are the subjects focused on in this set. Each set is designed to be used by a team of two students at a time. The set itself contains 2,260 parts and components, including the RoboPro LT software, the BT Smart Controller, a Bluetooth controller, an electronic module, a pullback motor, a solar motor, an excess motor, a mini motor, a compressor, two solar modules, a gold cap energy storage unit, an NTC resistor, a photo transistor, an LED, two rainbow LEDs, and numerous other components, all of which come packed in a sturdy Gratinel storage box. Now, the project themes addressed in the STEM prep set include the following, sketching and documentation, simple machines, mechanical systems, conversion and storage of energy, electronics, optics, digital communication, and programming control systems. And once again, the curriculum for the STEM Prep 2.0 set will provide enough material to cover 75 plus academic hours. Now, as I mentioned before, the STEM Prep 2.0 also includes step-by-step -step pictorial instructions called from these nine individual Fisher Technics sets. The drive systems set, the eco energy set, which of course uh, focuses on renewable energy, pneumatics, mechanics, physics one and physics two, electronics, optics and light, and the robotics BT beginner set. Aside from the five models shown in the instructions for the Eco Energy set, which incorporate the optional fuel cell add-on, which can of course be purchased separately if you chose to, all of the other 118 models shown in these instructions can be built with the parts found in this one set. Now as such, even if you didn't wish to use the curriculum for whatever reason, the STEM Prep 2.0 set still acts as a very convenient and affordable way to have the building and learning options from these nine sets in one box. Next, we're going to look at the Fisher Technic STEM Engineering set. Now this set, which can be used as a follow-up to STEM Prep 2.0 or entirely on its own, is designed to provide students with a comprehensive overview of robotics coding and automation systems. The set again is designed for use by teams of two to up to even perhaps four students at a time. And the reason there's a little bit of a change here is because the projects are much more elaborate and they involve more steps than many of those found in the STEM Prep 2.0 curriculum. And because of this, it's easier to keep a higher number of students actively engaged with the research, the building, the programming, and the other activities that will be required. Now this set also contains 890 parts and components. It includes the RoboPro software that will be used for programming the models, the robotics TXT controller, which is a Bluetooth controller with Wi-Fi capability. Uh, it's got a full color touch screen. It's got special sounds that can be made, et cetera. Uh, there's a Fisher Technic AccuSet that's included, which is a rechargeable battery pack and charging unit. There are two encoder motors, a compressor, two photo transistors, two excess motors, a mini motor, six push button switches, a color sensor, an NTC resistor, two LEDs, two solenoid valves, a vacuum suction device, and many other components. And once again, it all comes packed in that handy Gratinol storage box. Now the project themes in the curriculum for the STEM engineering set will address the following areas, sketching and documentation, basic electricity, programming, sensing and vision systems, mobile robotics, actuators, and the fundamentals of automation and robotics. Now there are also activities included to address the following areas that come up during the course of the curriculum. Sketching, schematics, Ohm's Law and Power, an introduction to using RoboPro software, an introduction to using the TXT controller, flowcharts, open loop and closed loop programming, digital branching, edge triggered versus level triggered, logic gates, 
combinational logic, analog branching, variables, subprograms, data, sensors such as the digital switch and the digital photo transistor, analog sensors such as the NTC resistor and the color sensor, an introduction to the camera, using the camera attachment to detect motion, performing color detection, creating a ball finder, which involves using the camera as a vision system on the robot, working with the line tool, the encoder motors, building the control panel, learning about pneumatics, positions, recording robotic positions, and utilizing existing programs and subprograms. And once again, the curriculum material included with this set should provide enough material to cover 150 plus academic hours. Now the set also includes the step-by-step -step assembly instructions found in the following three Fisher Technic robotics sets, the Robotics TXT Advance, the Robotics and Electro Pneumatics, and the Robotics and Industry set. So once again, even if you wanted to work outside of the curriculum, the set still contains all of the parts, the software, the controller, power supply, et cetera, so that you can build any of the 22 models found in these three sets. Now this will include things like color sorting machines, pinball machine simulations, uh, mobile robots, robotic arms, and so on. Now at this point, as we've touched upon what's covered by each of the sets, I think it's really useful to show you just how the curriculum for the STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM engineering sets is structured. Each unit of both the STEM Prep 2.0 and the STEM engineering curriculum contains a roadmap of sorts where each of the following elements are addressed. The purpose, the concepts, the student deliverables, assessment and evaluation materials, an outline, the standards, an authentic project scenario, a daily teaching plan, supporting activities and resources. So to put this into better context, let's look at the curriculum that accompanies the STEM engineering set. Now again, while we're only gonna focus on material that's found in this particular set, the structure of the units and how subjects are addressed in both the STEM prep and the STEM engineering curriculum are, is essentially going to be the same for both. Now here you'll see the table of contents for the STEM engineering set. The first thing I'd like to note is that before we get into the specific units, and if you see here, we've got the units on sketching and documentation and basic electricity are mentioned on this page. But before we get into that, there's a sectional that's designed to help any new users of the Fisher Technic system to quickly get up to speed. Now again, the core building block in the Fisher Technic system is designed to attach from all six sides. And many of the other parts are designed for very specific design purposes. Now, is this is going to be a little bit different than the simple stacking construction of many other building sets you may have encountered. We've included this section right up front to increase both your comfort as a teacher with the system and also your students' comfort and to allow them to get the most from their building experience. For example, there's gonna be a section showing how all the parts fit together and discussing the pin and groove assembly method that's used in uh, many cases. You also have a section showing you how to identify the different types of parts from the core building blocks to more specialized parts, things like clip axles, girders, rivets, angle pieces, and much more. And there's also a section that shows you a picture of every part contained in each set, along with the name, the part number, and the quantity of that part that are included. Now, this can be especially useful if you ever wish to order additional quantities of any parts or just to add to your assortment. And for those educators who are new to an approach such as this, there's also a chapter discussing specifically how to go about conducting a project-based STEM education class. Now on that note, let's just jump right ahead to a sample unit to explore that structure which I've discussed here. Now this unit, as you will see from the image on the screen, now is focused on programming. And the picture you see right at the top of the page that says programming here is a graphic representation of what the RoboPro software looks like. Now, as you'll see in this close-up, RoboPro is designed to utilize icons that represent the different actions that the robot must perform, which students arrange in a flowchart style manner to create the program for each robotic model. Now, the nice thing about using graphic programming software such as RoboPro for programming is that it allows students who may not have any prior experience with programming of any sort to quickly become comfortable with doing so. But 
At the same time, it also helps to familiarize all students with the core concepts that will be found in all types of programming. Now moving right uh, back to the main page, as you'll see, right under the unit title, the first thing we're going to encounter in each unit is a section entitled, The Purpose of the Project. And this is the section that kind of introduces us to what we're going to be covering and clearly spells out to students the answer to that eternal question, so why are we doing this? See, too often in the past, students might encounter subject matter that didn't seem to have any relevance to them. I, I know for myself back in high school, it would have been something like trigonometry, which I just couldn't see the application for. Well, in this case, students are told why this material is necessary, where it's going to fit into the larger scheme of things, and what we're going to hope to develop here. Next, you will see the concepts to be addressed in this unit. And these are going to be the big ideas that students should take from this project that are going to be essential for them to understand and utilize, not only today, but that they're going to need to draw on as they move forward in STEM fields of study, and we would, of course, hope STEM-related careers. Now, following that, we see the outline. Now, in this section, we drill down more specifically to what's going to be addressed in this unit. Now, as this particular section, again, is focused on programming, you will see that we will touch upon areas such as the methods for writing programs, for example, flowcharts, word problems, and so on. Program characteristics, things like open or closed loop. We're going to look into things like uh, branching, digital, analog, and subprograms, and so on. Next, we come to the section where each of the specific standards to be met by this particular project unit are spelled out, which of course provides the educational justification for the project itself. Now, because it's impossible to include all of the standards that have been created by individual states and school districts, what we've done instead is we've selected the most universally accepted standards currently used across the United States today. With this in mind, we begin with the College and Career Readiness Math Standards, which are followed by the reading standards for literacy and history and social studies, as well as the writing standards for literacy and history, social studies, science, and technical subjects. Next, we have science standards, beginning with the NSES content standards for K-12, standards for technological literacy, and the ISTE Foundation standards for students, as well as the Next Generation Science standards. After this is the assessment section, which includes links to both general course rubrics, as well as rubrics related to the specific unit. Next in line is the essential question. And this can be thought of as the broad major idea to, to be explored in this unit. Now in this case, the question being put forth is, how can we make decisions electronically and remove the need for human intervention? After this follows up what is essentially the centerpiece of each unit, which is the student scenario. Now the student scenario for each unit gives the students an opportunity to explore the unit's essential question. And this comes in the form of a real world problem, a real world style problem that students are given to solve, which helps again to provide a tangible example of why the subject matter being explored is both relevant and important to understand. Now, in this particular example, once again taken from the programming unit, students are going to assume the role of a controller slash programmer working at a programming company that happens to specialize in designing elevators and writing the control packages for their clients. Now, working in small groups, which again is the way that all projects are approached in this style of curriculum, the students are being asked to work together to design an elevator that will have certain parameters and must be able to perform certain functions. Now, one example of this would be if the elevator was at rest on a middle floor and someone was to push a call button on one of the higher floors and one of the lower floors at the same time, that there has to be a protocol created in the programming for how the elevator addresses that. So again, in this section of the student scenario, the client's requirements, things like that are all spelled out and the students will be required uh, once again here to design an elevator create a program to address the specific requirements, uh, build the actual elevator prototype using the Fisher Technic parts, and eventually, at the end of the unit, as they will in the every unit, they're going to have to prepare a presentation for the fictional clients that includes a demonstration of their solution, which is the prototype, and whatever program they've created in action. 
Now the student scenario is followed by the daily plan. And the daily plan is essentially, again, that roadmap that I talked about, which clearly lays out the expectations as students work through the project in the student scenario. Now, each day of the plan acts as a guideline to spell out specifically what those students are going to look at that day and what they're going to need to accomplish. Now, you'll see that as different concepts are addressed, students are provided with helpful links which will give them more information. For example, they're going to have links showing them what will be required in the design brief I mentioned before. Uh, then they will be asked to create, and they're also what kind of information they'll need to keep track of in their digital engineering notebook. Hopefully, uh, you're st we're still on the internet here. Or you're going to see information like how to install and use the RoboPro programming software. And we're going to look at some of these links in detail a little bit later. Now, again, each day of the plan contains a different task to be addressed, an activity to perform, or a question to answer. For example, if you look at closely at the bottom of the page that I have highlighted here for day seven, you'll see that it's basically, it's a discussion topic that's put up. And in this case, it's how does my dishwasher know when the dishes are clean? Well, of course, a dishwasher doesn't judge or comprehend when dishes are clean, but instead it's programmed a certain way to go through certain cycles for a specific period of time. And so here the teacher can lead a discussion where this idea can be explored in more detail. Now, other things covered in this unit will include things like how data is taken from a sensor and recorded, or how files can be taken from RoboPro and put into an Excel format to be worked on and then put back into the RoboPro format. Uh, we're gonna be working with robotic positioning in this chapter and so on. Now, this is one of the longer units in the curriculum and in this case it continues for a period of 35 days total. Um, most are going to be a little bit shorter, but in any case, as students work through the daily plan and on their answer to the student scenario, once again, they're going to be required to perform research. They're going to be required to do trial and error experimentation and document the entire process. And this means, again, maintaining a design notebook and digital engineering journal. They're going to design and build a working prototype using the Fisher Technic system. Now, if the model is automated or robotic, as it is in the case of the uh, STEM engineering sets, the student will have to either design, will also have to design the program that controls the models. Now, putting everything together, each student group will, at the end of each of these units, again, create and deliver a presentation of their prototype in action. Now, the idea is that each day builds on the one before it and each activity is subsequently more complex, and along the way it provides more of the information that students are going to need to, need to draw on to successfully complete their projects. And what this does is it really helps to reinforce all the concepts, and it ties everything together in a very organic and meaningful manner. Now there are also various supplementary materials included at the end of each unit. Now depending on the unit, this can include vocabulary words, carefully selected web-based resources, Word documents, PDFs, and even PowerPoints. Now, once again, each unit of the curriculum for both the STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM Engineering sets follows the same structure as we've just seen, including the standards, the rubrics, the daily plan, the resources, and so on. Now, as I mentioned before, there are also numerous links throughout the curriculum designed to provide more guidance on specific topics as they rise up. Now, besides being linked this way throughout the curriculum, these sections are also collected in one place at the very end. Now, once again, using the STEM engineering curriculum as an example, there are links providing detailed information on such things as what is required in a design brief or in an engineering notebook. There is a section on schematic drawings another on Ohm's Law and Power, a section on how to program a robot to detect motion using the camera attachment, digital branching, working with flowcharts, open and closed loop programs, combinational logic, working with RoboPro, robotic positioning, working with sensors, working with data, using vision systems, sub-programs, and so on. 
Now there's also a section where all the rubrics for the curriculum are collected, both the general course rubrics, as well as the specific rubrics, rubrics for each individual project theme unit. And finally, this is followed by a section containing the step-by-step -step assembly instructions, which I mentioned before. Now, once again, the STEM prep curriculum will share the exact same structure, just with a focus, of course, on some different subject areas. Now at this point, I'd like to share a few photos with you from one of the schools currently using the Fisher Technic STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM, STEM Engineering sets. Now this particular school is Westfield Technical Academy with, uh, located in Westfield, Massachusetts. And the program at Westfield is conducted by Dave Roberts, who is the science teacher over at Westfield. Now what you will see in these pictures are the students as they address the first hands-on challenge presented in the curriculum for the STEM Prep 2.0 set which is the challenge of designing and building a prototype of a braking system, uh, such as the braking system you would find on a racing bicycle. Now, as you see here, students work in small groups. Again, with the STEM Prep 2.0, we recommend one set for each group of two students, but with the STEM engineering set, once again, because the projects are much more involved and a little more elaborate, you could expand this group up to three to four students per set. And as you will see from the photos, while the students are all working on the same project, there's no one right way, there's no single solution for addressing the design challenge given in each unit student scenario. What you're gonna see is that some of the students will design and build prototypes that work very smoothly and efficiently, and that others are going to create models that sometimes will need more refinement to be truly practical. But the goal in any case is, of course, to see how well the students synthesize all the concepts they've learned and worked on in small teams and how well they can use their creativity and problem solving skills to make something that will most effectively and efficiently answer the criteria given in the student scenario. Now, I'd also like to mention another benefit of the STEM prep and STEM engineering sets, albeit a somewhat unintentional one. Now, a large segment of the students at Westfield Technical Academy are what are classified as ESL students, which are English as a second language. And in this case, these are students who originally came to the US from Russia and the Ukraine. Now in Massachusetts, teachers are required to take classes in ELL, which is of course English language learning, to help meet the needs of these students. Now, Dave Roberts, who as I mentioned before, is the teacher in charge of the Fisher Technic STEM programs at Westfield, told me that he has attended three different ELL training classes. And all three of these ELL training classes have in particular highlighted project-based learning as an important learning tool for ESL students. Now, the reasoning for this is because design is really considered sort of a universal language. And working through the curriculum in this hands-on fashion helps to not only teach the students essential STEM-related concepts, but also aids in building their English language skills because it helps them to make the connections to actual processes and actions that they can understand. Now, again, what I've shared here is just a sample of some ways that students can address this particular design challenge. Now, as I stated before, each subsequent unit will require more sophisticated designs and each is going to build on what's come before. So just to quickly summarize what we've covered, each Fisher Technic STEM Prep 2.0 or STEM engineering set contains everything you're gonna need. It contains all of the parts, includes the software, all the assembly instructions, and complete day-by-day -day curriculum. And the curriculum included with each set is yours to use this year, next year, and for many years to come. There are no additional fees, there are no subscription charges, nothing, nothing like that occurs. Everything you need is included. And again, it's all reusable. Build a model, perform the experiments, take it apart, and you're ready to build another. Of course, if you ever did need any odd spare parts or replacement pieces, these can be purchased individually in whatever quantity you choose or need directly from the Studica website. Again, the Fisher Technics uh, STEM Prep 2.0 and STEM Engineering sets are designed to make it easy for educators from any background to offer a hands-on project-based learning experience to their students. Once again, this is what experts agree is one of the most effective methods known for teaching STEM concepts. Again, the STEM Prep 2.0 set comes with over 2,200 parts components, 
day-by-day project-based curriculum PDFs for both students and teachers with over 75 academic hours of material, as well as step-by-step assembly instructions from nine popular Fisher Technic education sets, all of which allows you to build 118 different models plus what's in the curriculum. Now the pricing on this set starts at just $8.99 per set with classroom pricing available upon request. If you contact us, we'll be happy to get you a quote on that. And for the STEM engineering set, which is shown here, it includes 890 parts components, which includes, of course, the programming software, the full color touchscreen TXT controller, sensors, motors, and all much more, as well as student and teacher curriculum PDFs featuring over 150 academic hours of material and full color step-by-step -step assembly manuals from three most popular Fisher Technic robotics sets. Now the pricing on this set starts at just $9.39 per set. And again, please contact us directly for classroom pricing and a quote, and we'll be happy to do that for you. So at this point, we can open it up for questions. And let me first off uh, look at, I see there are some questions in the Zoom webinar chat window. So let me look at that. I believe it is from Christine. So let me go back. Could you please remind me first off, how long is the pacing suggested? Was it one day per five day cycle? Uh, no, this is what we're, what this is set up to be is essentially a 50 minute period of STEM education for five days a week. So you would have a period of this just the same way you would have a period of English, math, what have you uh, in your class uh, activities. So as we mentioned, or as I mentioned, the STEM prep 2.0 curriculum is designed so that essentially you can offer 75 plus academic hours. So essentially if you're doing five days a week, every week for half a year, that's going to cover you there. If you're using the STEM engineering set, that's going to con uh, contain over double the amount of material, 150 plus academic hours. So essentially the way it's laid out, you could have that 50 minutes a day, five days a week for a full academic year. So um, that's the way that could be done. So yeah, so it's not, it's not once a week unless you were going to do, let's say, a much longer class. If you wanted to do something that was, you know, several hours, uh, you know, a whole afternoon or something, it's, it's conceivable that you could do something like that, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, trying to break it up otherwise. Also to mention, because this sometimes comes up, when you get these sets, you would need a set. You would need a set for each group of students, and obviously in each class. So, if you had a class of 20 students, for example, and you were using the STEM prep, which is two students per set, you would get 10 sets to cover the 20 students. If you were doing multiple classes, though, and those classes were being conducted at the same time, you would need sets dedicated for each group of students. The reasoning being is that some projects that they're working on can be completed very quickly, something they would do in a class period or two, but other projects that they might be working on could take several weeks, like when I mentioned the um, elevator project that they're working on where they have to create, create the elevator to program and control. Uh, that they're gonna be doing over a course of 35 days, so depending on where each, uh, each of your groups is in the building activities, you're going to need to have materials for each of them to use so they can all maintain their individual uh, projects. If anyone else has any questions, no problem, Christine, you're welcome. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, once again, if you look at the Zoom toolbar, uh, under the ellipses, there is a Zoom webinar chat window. You can pop that up and type something in, or you can just use the one that says question and answer and type it in there. Give you just a second to do that. I will have a drink of water here. Going once, going twice like an auction. And at this point, I will just move it right along. So first off, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to attend this presentation today. Uh, if you would like to know more about either the Fisher Technic STEM Prep 2.0 or the STEM Engineering sets, uh, if you'd like to request a quote, or if you'd like to speak to your dedicated educational representative, you can call us at either of the numbers that you see on the screen. Now, if you're in the U.S., our toll-free number is 888-561-7521. 
If you happen to be uh, located in Canada, you would call the other number, which is Studica Canada at 800-561-7520. And you can also find more information on both of these sets, as well as all the other Fisher Technic education solutions, which are available. And that's right on the Studica website. And the address for that page is www.studica.com forward slash Fisher Technic, F-I-S-C-H-E-R-T-E-C-H-N-I-K, hyphen education, or you can email us. For quotes and pricing, you can please email info at studica.com, or if you'd like, you can email me directly with any questions you have whatsoever regarding anything I've talked about or anything Fisher Technic related, and that is at lancezurich at studica.com. Now I see, do I still see one more hand up here? Hang on a second, let me see. Robert, I see you have a hand up there. If you could use the chat windows to uh, to type in whatever question you might have, I'd be happy to answer it. Uh, once again, there is a question and answer uh, screen that you can pop up off the Zoom toolbar or you can use the Zoom webinar chat window. So if you do have a question, just feel free to type it in there. Uh, yes, Robert, we do have a recording of this that will probably be going up, I would say, probably tomorrow. Uh, Christy will send you a link to that. Uh, once again, if you do have any questions, any of you, or Robert, or Christine, or any of, any of the attendees, uh, please feel free to just uh, email me directly. My email is lancez, L-A-N-C-E-Z, -E like zebra, at studica, S-T-U-D-I-C-A dot com, and I'll be happy to answer that for you. So um, once again, uh, Christy will be sending out an email with the link to the recording, uh, which you'll probably get them within the next 24 hours. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, have a great day, stay safe, and uh, we look forward to talking to you soon. Take care.